Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this big fella right here, the Hammers of Ragnarok expansion for Rum and Bones Second Tide. Just did a playthrough of this last week, so you can go back and check that one out. But here we're just going to focus on this specific expansion, show you what you get in it, and then afterwards we're going to give my final thoughts, tell you what, what I think. So here is everything that you're going to be getting in a copy of the Hammers of Ragnarok expansion for Rum and Bones Second Tide. You're going to first of all get a little sheet that basically explains uh, one of the new uh, changes that it uh, introduces to the game. You'll also on the backside see that it has a little bit of a background for each of the different uh, new characters that come in the expansion. You're also going to be getting cards for all of the uh, new people in the expansion. Of course, the crew card is included in that. Uh, so you'll have five new characters plus the crew card. You'll be getting miniatures for all of those uh, things as well. Each of the five new heroes and uh, uh, three different sculpts for the crew and then another sculpt for the bosuns as well. Then you'll also be getting your deployment tokens, the glory tokens, which are talked about on the other side of this thing. And glory tokens are pretty much uh, another currency for the hammers uh, to use in the game rather than just gold. It gives them the ability to do certain things. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on. You'll also be getting all of the ability cards for all of the new characters. And of course, Hammers of Ragnarok will come with their own Viking-ish themed deck. As you can see here, Fenrir's Rage, Thor's Wrath, Odin's Decree. They all have kind of a uh, real Viking uh, blood rage uh, feel to it. So really cool there. The different deck features are not changed. There's no difference there, but uh, they do have that grayish background, which denotes that they are the hammers. So let's go ahead and get down to uh, some of the little nitty gritty parts of the expansion. Uh, you'll also... Uh, and then finally, you're also going to be getting two new boards that represent the two Viking longboats that the Hammers are traveling the open seas with. So let's go ahead and get down to some of the little nitty gritty things. I'm going to go over each of the different characters, give you a little bit more of a close up on the minis so you can have a pretty good idea of what's there. And then also look at the uh, deck of theirs as well. So let's get to it. First off here, we have Asgard, Chosen of Odin. And uh, he's the captain of the ship. He has a basic attack where he's rolling two dice, but he's hitting on two plus. So that is a pretty cool thing as well. He has no effect until you level him up. But once you pay four to level him up, uh, if you use a glory token, this attack gains plus two dice and you can reroll all misses. And so at this point, he would be rolling, if you use a glory token, five dice and their scoring hits on two plus. So he's really nasty when you get that buffed up. Uh, Odin's Judgment here, you have to pay to upgrade this to level one, but once you do, you can choose one, any friendly heroes, I'm sorry, all friendly heroes gain one coin or all deployed enemy heroes suffer one damage. So it just depends on what you'd like to do there. You can pay four coins to upgrade that and you basically choose one, all friendly heroes gain one coin and can heal up to two, or all deployed enemy heroes suffer two damage. So that's also really cool, especially if you buff it right up. And then finally, his inherent uh, ability here, Odin's Chosen, he cannot be recruited to a crew containing Hagen. And then also, once during his turn, he can discard up to four coins to give one friendly hero a glory token. So uh, he can... Uh, that's just a really cool ability, I think. The miniature is really top-notch, what you can expect from Cool Mini or not at this point. Uh, just a lot of really neat detail, a lot of cool Viking stuff going on. I love the Odin Ravens that are ones in his hand up here and ones on his shoulder over here. Uh, just really cool, really neat um, very Viking-y. Next, we have Halstein from the Bear Clan. He is the Grand Warden from the Bear Clan, and his basic attack lets you roll four dice at four plus uh, at a range of one, and then hits of a six cause stun. 
which is pretty cool because it's basically taking uh, an action away from that hero on their next activation. Uh, the, his Steadfast ability has no effect until you level it up. Uh, it costs zero to have an effect, but then you have to pay three to level it up to level two. And it says, when damage would be dealt to any models in Holstein's zone, you will prevent up to three of that damage, flip this skill back to level one. So you, you have to pay three, use it, it flips back, you have to pay three to basically uh, enable it, it again. If you have glory and you use that glory token, you can prevent all damage instead. Halstein may immediately make one basic attack. So again, glory tokens coming into uh, use here, and he is basically the protector of uh, the crew, so to speak. He is also called a legendary defender. Uh, when a zone within three containing a friendly model is attacked, Halstein can discard two coins. If he does, before that attack is rolled, place him in that zone. So that's a pretty cool thing where he goes to where people are needing him and his help. If you upgrade his basic attack to level two, uh, hits cause stun, period. You don't have to roll a six. And you gain plus one to hit for every four damage on Halstein. So for every four damage it's on Halstein, this to hit number goes down by one. So it's very possible, depending on how much damage he's taken, that that can very, be a very nasty attack. So again, Halstein probably, mm, he's very much in the running for my favorite character in this expansion. The model, of course, is very cool as well. Um, he has his uh, huge Warhammer there on the back and uh, just really a neat model, a lot of cool detail. Easy detail at that uh, as far as painting is concerned. So uh, looking forward to possibly giving him a go. And here we have Ivar, the Ram Clan war drummer. Uh, so here he has not necessarily a basic attack, but a basic effect and uh, the rallying march. So basically uh, we can choose one of these three options here. Number one, a uh, friendly hero gains three coins, or number two, a friendly hero may heal up to three, or number three, a friendly hero may move up to two zones. Uh, and so if you have a glory token and you use it, you get to choose two of those, not just one. Then if you upgrade it to level two, uh, you choose one, and basically the effects of those are just heightened. Instead of gaining two coins, you gain three. Instead of healing two, you, get, you can heal four. And instead of moving two zones, you can move three zones. And then, of course, if you still use the glory token, you could actually choose two of those. Uh, then he also has his inciting march here that has to be, uh, you have to pay three to involve it. And uh, that says all friendly crew within two zones immediately activate. If they knock out a hero, Ivar gains one glory token. So that's pretty cool. You can spend three to upgrade that to level two, uh, which says that all friendly zones uh, immediately activate within two. Uh, their attacks gain plus one to hit. And again, Ivar gains one glory token if they knock out a hero. So that's a pretty cool thing as well. Down here, Taunting Beat. Uh, it has no uh, effect until leveled up. You can use a glory token to level this up for free, though. And once it is leveled up, when an enemy hero activates, that hero must spend all available actions to move within one zone of Ivar, and then must spend any remaining actions to attack Ivar's zone. And then you flip that skill back to one. So he has a taunting drum beat that pulls uh, he other heroes in and uh, hopefully you can spring traps that way. His model, again, is very cool. I love the, uh, I guess, the leg bones that he's using to beat uh, that uh, taunting beat into the drum. Uh, of course, he has that axe that uh, is ready for use should it come to that. Uh, but again, just a really neat model. Uh, very cool indeed. And here we have Noma from the Serpent Clan, the Doom Prophet from the Serpent Clan. She is our gunner uh, for the Hammers of Ragnarok. Her basic attack lets you roll three dice at three plus and can be shot from a range of two. 
And right off the bat, she can prioritize heroes. So she doesn't have to uh, shoot through all of the crew that the hero might be using as a me shield. She can target the hero specifically. So that's really cool. If you let pay three and level that up to level two, uh, again, not only can she still prioritize heroes, hits cause blind, and if she uses a glory token, hits also cause bleed, silence, slow, and stun. She's also rolling plus one dice at uh, three plus uh, as well. So a really nasty uh, individual right off the bat, especially so if you level it up to level, to level two. Uh, Prophecy Fulfilled has no effect until you pay three to level it up. And then she can roll four dice and assign those dice to any number of deployed enemy heroes. Each hero suffers damage equal to the total value on the dice assigned to them. Flip that back to level one. So uh, pretty nasty little thing. It does cost eight to upgrade. So you'll have to do that multiple times. Pr pretty expensive, but also really cool. Hexcraft down here, you have to spend four to uh, basically initiate it. When, a when an enemy hero attacks, that hero suffers minus one to hit for this attack and suffers one damage per miss. You flip that skill back to level one. If you have a glory token, though, they suffer two damage per miss instead whenever you use that ability. So she is a nasty little character as well. Uh, a lot of tricks up her sleeve, so to speak. But again, the miniature is what you would expect from a cool mini or not uh, Simon Limited um, miniature for one of their miniature games. That snake wrapping around the back, coming up and being speared by her staff. Uh, just a really neat um, thematic model from the Serpent Clan. And here we have Ilva, the swashbuckler of the Hammers of Ragnarok. She's from the Wolf Clan and she is a shield sister with the Wolf Clan. Now, her basic attack, she gains plus one die when targeting a zone with a hero who is not activated this round. So it's a pretty specific kind of special ability, but that would give her four dice at three plus instead of just three, if you're able to work that out. If you pay four coins and level that basic attack up to two, she can also now prioritize heroes and she gains plus two dice when in that same situation of targeting a zone that has an unactivated hero. So she could be rolling five dice at three plus, so very nasty there. Her Heart Seeker Spear is where she really starts to uh, gain her footing though. You have to pay four coins to inactivate it, but hits of six deal two damage to heroes and cause bleed. So she's rolling three dice at three plus hits from a range of two away. So pretty nasty. If you upgrade this to level two, however, uh, hits of six deal two damage and cause heroes to bleed. Um, and then if you use a glory token while attacking with a heart seeker spear, all hits trigger this effect instead of just sixes. So again, <laughs> a really nasty uh, swashbuckler here. Her sense weakness uh, you start with this, but it doesn't have any uh, effect until it's leveled up. You can use a glory token to level it up for free. But when you do this, when an enemy hero is reduced to four or less hit points, Ilva may immediately move up to two zones and make a Heart Seeker Spear attack targeting that hero's zone. Then you flip this skill back to level one. So again, she has a lot of nasty effects as well. Really cool, a little low on life, but still very cool. Have to protect her, but a very cool character. And her uh, model is probably my favorite in the group, although I really do like the bosun, the bosun sculpt as well. I just really like that shield and the spear uh, and then the sword in the other hand. Uh, just a very cool looking model. I like it a lot. And then you have the crew for the Hammers of Ragnarok. Uh, not too much extra stuff that's going on here, but deck hands gain plus one to hit if there is a bosun in the zone. That's normal. Uh, they're all rolling just two dice. Bosons roll two dice. Uh, with three plus hits, and of course the deckhands gain that two pl three plus ability if a bosun is there. You can upgrade your bosuns 
uh, which adds two to your attacks. Um, and then uh, you can also reroll misses. And if you do, uh, you would have to knock out a bosun in that zone. The deck gun ability here, uh, the upgrade basically just gives you a better to hit a number uh, than before. So that's cool as well. Uh, the crew uh, miniatures are really cool. Uh, again, here is the bosun and uh, just really, really cool. This one or the shield uh, sister, the Ilva, are, are probably my favorite miniature from this set but i just really enjoy um that viking -y, like 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 half viking half pirate look that this guy has just really interesting really liked it a lot thought they would knock this model out of the park and then of course your crew has three different uh sculpts for it as well here is one of them just uh you know the two swords out there really neat model there and then you also have this crossbowman that i thought was pretty neat he's carrying that ball and chain as a weapon there kind of like a mace on a on a chain really neat as well a lot of cool design and detail on that model and then the uh, female sculpt for the model that big two-handed broadsword uh, just a really neat action pose. I really like action poses. I just like how it just kind of gives life to the model. So really neat model. As far as the deck that comes with the Hammers of Ragnarok, you're going to have a lot of uh, other um, cards in here that are going to be very similar ones that you've seen before. Pick up the slack, parlay, uh, heat stroke, med crate, rum, Roll the Bones, Daring Leap, Sea Monster Attack, Sudden Tidal Wave, and Broadside Barrage. You're going to see cards like that that you've probably seen before or, or just have that basic pirate feel to it. But you're also going to be getting cards like uh, the Gates of Valhalla. So um, you use that during a friendly hero's activation. That person gets one glory token. Fan Fafnir's Treasure. All friendly heroes gain plus one gold. And if that hero has a gold token, a glory token, you gain two instead. Odin is Decree. Where if that uh, enemy hero is KO'd this activation, you gain an additional victory point for knocking them out. If they are not, your opponent gains that victory point. Uh, Ayer's Mercy, um, heal that hero up to three. So it's during a he friendly hero's activation. If you use a glory token, you can instead remove any amount of damage from that hero. So that's a really cool thing. Loki's Trickery, at the start of the round, you switch the positions of two deployed enemy heroes. That's a really neat effect as well. Kind of hard to pull off though. So um, yeah, yeah there, there you go. Um, Thor's Wrath, during a friendly hero's activation, this hero may immediately move up to two zones and make one basic attack. This attack must target a zone containing an enemy hero. That's cool. Uh, the Blessing of Yggdrasil, when a friendly hero would be KO'd, that hero may immediately make one basic attack targeting an enemy hero. If that enemy hero is KO'd, this hero does not gain a dead man's coin. So that's really neat. Tires Smite. When a friendly hero attacks a zone containing an enemy hero, this attack must prioritize heroes. This hero may activate one glory effect on his attack for free. Uh, Heimdall's Sight. On a friendly turn, so it could also be used during a crew turn. Your opponent may not play tied cards in response to this card, first of all. You would look at your opponent's hand of tied cards and discard one card from them. So that's pretty cool as well. And then Fenrir's Rage. When a friendly hero attacks a zone containing an enemy hero, you roll a die. This attack gains that many additional dice. After this attack is complete, the hero suffers that much damage. So... Uh, really cool um, Viking flavored cards in that deck. Really cool addition. The glory tokens, we've already mentioned them and, and referenced them a, a few times as we went through and talked about the different characters. But generally speaking, glory tokens are awarded to heroes when either they are KO'd by a hero, enemy hero, or 
they KO an enemy hero. They are awarded a glory token in any, either of those circumstances, and then you can use them uh, for the different effects that we've already talked about as we've gone through some of the other things. So uh, this is a really neat um, uh, Norse addition to Rum and Bones. And then finally, I just wanted to give you a close-up shot of the ship, the longboat uh, that comes. You actually get two of these, but I just wanted to give you a, a close-up of it so you could see the artwork and the artistic choices that went into it. I love the, the little ballista there at the very be uh, front of the ship, spears sticking out the side. I really like the icon that the hammers were given. I really like it a lot. And just a little bit of the, you know, the, the little details, little Easter eggs, I guess you could call them as you look through the different uh, things that were artistically put onto the long boats. As we get towards the back, you see the shields that are uh, being uh, just kind of uh, leaned up against the side of the ship and that kind of stuff. There's some really neat artistic choices that they made for the long boats. So that is the Hammers of Ragnarok expansion for Rum and Bone's Second Tide. And in case you didn't realize and get the drift as I was going through all of the different components, this is my favorite crew expansion for Rum and Bones, uh, beyond the shadow of a doubt. Um, of course, I'm partial to Viking themes and that type of stuff. I really enjoy um, just the way they look and the, 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 the way they act, I guess you could say. Maybe, maybe that's not a very good thing to say, but in a game, I guess. Let me make that delineation. Uh, I just really like the theme that usually comes along with a Viking game or a Viking-themed expansion. Uh, Blood Rage is one of my favorite games. It is my favorite game, actually. So uh, with this theming having its base and foundation in Blood Rage, uh, yeah, my, my liking it was kind of a shoe in really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I enjoyed playing it against the, uh, faction that I played Derek against the other day. So it was kind of a hodgepodge, whatever he wanted to put together. I really thought they all worked together. I didn't get to play two of them. So the next time I get it to the table, I'm going to incorporate those two and keep one of the others as well that I already played with. So I, man, this is like an auto buy. And in my world, uh, this is an auto buy. Uh, if you enjoy Rum and Bones Second Tide, which you should, because it's really better than the first uh, Rum and Bones. If you enjoy the game and you enjoy Vikings, you don't even need to think about this. This is auto, auto purchase as far as I'm concerned. But I understand that money doesn't grow on trees. So it's one of the reasons why I'm making this video. So you can see what you're getting and just have that already in your decision-making process. So for me, this expansion is two thumbs way up. I am partial, I understand that, but I think the characters all work well together. They have a different feel than any of the other crews that I've played before, and that's one of the things I also enjoy about it. It's not just a, you know, a, a cookie cutter uh, redo. It's much more than that. There was a lot of thought thrown into this, or at least it feels like it. I wasn't privy to all of the stuff that went into it, but it feels like they put a lot of thought into the different cards. They put a lot of thought into the different abilities that each of the different heroes have. So with all that being said, way, way, way up two thumbs for me, for the Hammers of Ragnarok expansion, for Rum and Bones Second Tide. We'll see you guys on the flip side.